ICP students. Uh, welcome to class today uh, on Thursday. Um, if you have not caught on to this yet, we do have a test tomorrow. Um, it's going to be online. It is a little bit shorter than most of our tests that we've been having in class. Um, but even though it is shorter, I am giving you an hour and a half from the time you start the test till you finish it, just to make sure that your internet's being a little bit slow or it freezes up for a couple minutes that you have time to finish it. Okay, um, so just remember your test is tomorrow. Um, I highly suggest that you go through and you do the practice test on Canvas. Um, if you do the practice test a couple of times, I can about guarantee you will do decent on this test. Um, today, what I'm doing is through this video, I'm going to talk about the math questions and how. Um, so the Word document that I posted on Canvas, the study guide, not the practice test, but just the study guide itself, um, the math problems that were towards the end, I'm going to go through each of those and walk you through how you would solve those. Um, some of these math problems are on that practice test as well that you can attempt to do them and they do give you different numbers uh, each time so that you hopefully can do it a couple times and make sure you know how to do it. So let's go ahead and get started. So our first math problem is how much work is done on a car if 2000 Newton force is exerted to move it 40 meters down a road? Now. Reminder, this is on the Word document study guide that is on Canvas. Um, this is like number 30 or so, something like that. Um, so in this question, it's asking how much work is done on a car. Now, if you look at your equations that are on the Word document, you will see an equation for work. Work equals force times distance. Now, remember, force is has the unit of newtons which if you notice in this problem oh shoot why did my pen not work there we go so right up here newtons that is our force and our distance has a unit of meters and that's right there so we know we have these two things so we can solve for work so if we plug in our newtons for force and our 40 meters for our distance we get this right here and if you multiply those two numbers using a calculator, I believe you should get 80,000. Now, since we solved for work, work has the unit of joules. So if you need to say what is unit would your final answer for work be, you would put down joules or capital J. All right, so that is this problem. Um, it's pretty straightforward. You find your equation, you plug in, you solve for it. All right, here's our next one. A 200,000 watt engine can accelerate from rest to a top speed in eight seconds. How much work does the engine do in that time? Now, this sounds similar to the question we just did. It's asking how much work. But if you remember from that equation, in order to find the work using that equation, you need force and you need distance. In this problem, watts is not force, and seconds is, by golly, it's not distance. So you have watts and seconds, which is not force and distance. So you need to find another equation that has work in it. Thankfully, you have this equation here, which is also listed. Um, power equals work divided by time. So it has work, and that's what we're trying to solve for, and you need power and time. Well, obviously, seconds is time. Now, power, if you don't remember, watts is the unit for power. It's the SI unit for power. So if we take the 200 and we plug it into power and we take the 8 and plug it into time, we get our equation as 200,000 equals work divided by 8. Now, in order to solve for work, we have to get it by itself. So we have work divided by 8, which means we need to multiply by 8. And what you do to one side, you do to the other. So we have 8 times 200,000, and you get 1,600,000 joules. And remember, joules is the unit 
for work. All right, so we have 1.6 million joules. That is the amount of work that our engine did. All right, that takes us to this next problem. A 800 Newton man climbs a 12 meter vertical rope in four seconds. How much power does he use? All right, so we're solving for power and we only have one equation that has power in it. Power equals work divided by time. Now we know the time, that's in seconds. But work, we are not given work anywhere in this problem because remember work is joules. And neither of these units are joules. But what we do have is we have newtons and meters, which is force and distance. And if you remember, work equals force times distance. So if we take this number, plug it into force, we take our distance, plug it into distance, we have 800 times 12, which gives us a work of 9,600. So at this point, we know our work, which we can then take that and plug it back into our original equation. So since we know that, since we know our work, we know our time, we can plug it into this equation. So we plug our work into the work, we take our time, we plug it into our time, and we get power equals 9,600 divided by four. We plug that into our calculator, I believe you should get 2,400. Now, if you remember, power has the unit, the SI unit of watts. Now, that's the SI unit for power. Um, a, more, a common unit of power that we also use is horsepower. And there's about 750 horsepower per, or no, 750 watts per horsepower. That takes us to our joke of the day, which I know all of you have been waiting for. So what do you call a penguin in the desert? Hmm. Lost! Hey, yo! All right, so that takes us to our next problem. Um, so in this problem, we are asked to solve for efficiency. Uh, so we need to solve for efficiency. Um, this is just the next problem that's on that Word document study guide that's on Canvas. And so this is saying a machine requires 420 joules of work input to do 230 joules of work lifting a crate. What is the efficiency of the machine? Now our equation for efficiency is work output divided by work input times 100. Now remember, work output is going to be what the machine is doing. Okay, so what is it actually accomplishing? Well, it's lifting a crate. It's the work of lifting a crate, and that was 230 joules. So the 230 joules is going to be our work output. Now our work inputs, well, it's explicitly said work input, so we can just take that number and plug it in here. So we end up with 230 divided by 420 times 100. So we're gonna start by dividing these numbers. When we do that, we get 0.548 times 100, and remember that times 100 just turns a decimal into a percentage. And so our efficiency ends up at 54.8%. Now you notice there's no unit. When we solve for efficiency, we never have a unit. Okay, efficiency, no unit, it's just a percentage. So that is solving for efficiency. That takes us to our last one. Um, in this problem, a ramp is nine meters long. It goes from the ground to the back of a semi-trailer, which is 1.5 meters above the ground. What is the ideal mechanical advantage of the ramp? 
All right, so we're solving for ideal mechanical advantage, which if you recall is I M A. Okay, so we're using the equation that solves for IMA, which is ideal mechanical in advantage equals distance input divided by the output distance. Now, we're talking about a ramp. And if you guys recall, in one of my review slides from before spring break, I gave you kind of a cheat sheet on how you know or what is the input, what is the output for different machines. Um, so for a ramp, the input is going to be how long the ramp is. So our input is going to be nine meters. And our output for a ramp, the distance output for a ramp is how high off the ground it comes. So this comes 1.5 meters above the ground. So that's our distance output. So when we plug these in, we get nine divided by 1.5 which gives us an ideal mechanical advantage of four. All right, so anyways, that is the last of the math problems. Um, that is all I focused on on these videos. If you have questions about any of the other questions from the study guide, from the practice test, please send me an email and I will try to answer it. Uh, remember, the practice test is only available till 9 a.m. tomorrow. At 9 a.m., that practice test becomes closed and I will not reopen that. Okay, so you do have your test though. Um, if you didn't catch on to this, your test is open notes. So any notes that you've been taking, any example problems you've been writing down, you are allowed to use those on the test tomorrow and you will have an hour and a half. It should not take you an hour and a half though. I gave you way more than enough time. I, honestly, most of you will probably finish that test in under 30 minutes, if not less than 20 minutes. All right, as long as you do some preparing, take the practice test again if you haven't. Um, I'm not giving you new, a new assignment, so use this time to retake the practice test. Anyways, have a good day. Questions, send me an email.